The country's foreign reserves has dropped by $4.45 billion from the $43.07 billion recorded in January 2019 to $38.61 billion in December of 2019, according to Central Bank of Nigeria's data. Now, the data stated that Nigeria's foreign reserves has kept a downward trend since, the June, since June 2019 when it dropped from the $45 billion mark in July to reach the $40 billion mark. It slides further past the $40 billion mark later in November and currently stands at $38.61 billion. Meanwhile, the central bank recently disclosed that Nigeria's dependence on crude oil for more than 60% of fiscal revenue and over 90% of forex earnings implied that the country's revenue and forex supply was exposed to shocks from the international oil market. It added that these shocks were transmitted to the Nigerian economy as manufacturers and traders who required forex for purchase of necessary raw materials were faced with deteriorating supplies. Now, joining us in the studio is an economist, Osilama Okofu, to discuss more about this. I'm sorry, I think I've murdered your surname. No, you haven't. It's I still apologize. alive. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You actually did pronounce it well. Okay, thank you. And now, so data released by Central Bank of Nigeria revealed that the country's forest reserve, like we read, dropped from $43.07 billion in January uh, to $38.61 billion in December. Now, what do you think is most responsible for this? I mean, uh, from what you read earlier, uh, the central bank actually did state that uh, our overdependence on crude, crude. oil for uh, um, over 80 percent of our forex earnings, mm -hmm. and given the you know vagaries in international market factors that are exogenous to us, we don't have control over. Um, of course, those shocks will impact negatively on our and in capacity mm -hmm. in line with our ability to produce and meet our daily you know production benchmark um, so, so th th these are the factors of course that are you know uh, directly impacting on um, why our forex has dropped mm -hmm. again to given the fact that um, the united states has gone into full-blown production yeah. in the area of shale um, previous governments before now you know, we're protecting certain areas in the United States, but the businessman in Donald Trump has thrown open, mm -hmm. you know, the doors for production, even in areas that are essentially what previous to now reserved as parks. Mm -hmm. You know, so, um, and that used to be a major buyer of our, you know, light oh. crude, bonny light. You know, so th these are factors, you know, when you're Productive capacity is low. Mm -hmm. Your the demand for your product has reduced. You know, of course, I mean, if this forms a major part of your earning capacity, of course, your your earning, your your um, earnings will drop, mm -hmm. which is what again to your seen in the depletion in our foreign foreign reserve. Mm -hmm. Added to that is the fact that the the budget just recently signed into law by the president, yeah. the 2020 budget. Is, um, is a deficit budget of over two trillion naira. Yeah. Now, um, the government is expected to make up that difference through borrowings internally and externally. Okay. Um, well, internal borrowing comes by way of issuing, you know, certain instruments through the central bank for people to invest in, like okay. trade reviews. Mm -hmm. um, externally, you may borrow from our development partners. But then the question, therefore, is. Um, how well are we able to assess those those lines anymore? Now, when those lines are seeming to dry up or are not as forthcoming as they should be, mm -hmm. of course, we expect the government to start dipping Elsewhere. its hand into the reserve mm -hmm. because the reserve is like your is like your savings. If you are in, let's bring it down to you as an individual now, what you that's your savings. What you've kept aside for the rainy day, the rainy day has come and it's it's um, it's pouring raining cats and dogs. Mm -hmm. You know so. The government has to meet certain expectations, okay. you know, um, and until 
its ability to borrow, mm -hmm. whether internally or externally, you know, is, is reached or is met, then of course uh, they have to dip, dip their hand into, into the, the reserves. reserves. Okay. Having said that, I know you tried explaining something before, Nana. As of December 2019, the country's foreign reserves have dropped to 38.595 uh, in November. And now, what could be the impact of rising inflation and depleting external reserves on the economy and Nigerians by extension? Are the uh, connections even first yeah, of all? Yeah, um, I, I'm, I'm struggling to see the correlation between uh, uh, dipping foreign reserve and, and inflation. inflation. Okay. Uh, inflationary measures, or inflation is actually a function of, or well, majorly a function of internal policies, things that, you know, that, that transpire internally. Within? From within, yeah, i.e. rise in taxation, um, government policies as it affects manufacturing whether good or bad. I mean, if it's not good, then of course you You'll have, the um, you start seeing the negative impact, you know, loss of jobs, you know, um, and, and stuff like that, you know, so it, it, it's, um, but wrapping my head around it, essentially, um, now, the, the, the drop in our foreign reserve could be good or bad. Now, if the government is dipping a hand, let me use the word hand now, mm -hmm dipping a hand into the foreign reserve and putting the, those monies into income generating ventures, into developing our infrastructure, that's positive, yeah. right? Yeah, but if the monies go into areas of maybe recurrent expenditure, mm -hmm. just to pay salaries, monuments, and stomach infrastructure, then that's not good, mm -hmm. right? So it depends. There's really nothing wrong in depleting our foreign reserve if it's to help develop infrastructures. I mean, of what use is us having over $40 billion in foreign reserve mm -hmm. when our, our, our highways are not materialable, our rural infrastructure is decadent. You know, so these are some of the issues we, you know, we, we need to right. look at. You know, so um, it, it's, it's, it's neither here nor there. It's actually a function of um, what those monies are used for. Mm -hmm. and, and then, of course, our it what is one amount to? on the people. All right, so let's go to CBN also revealed that Nigeria's dependence on crude oil for more than 60% of fiscal revenue and over 90% of forex earnings exposed Nigerians, Nigeria's economy rather, to shocks from the international oil market, which you also alluded to. Now, how can Nigeria cushion the effects on the com uh, of this in mm. the coming? This year already. I'm tempted to yeah, say yeah. in the coming year. <laughs> already we are in the we're year. Already in the year. <laughs> yeah. You know, the, 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 the 2020 that we talked about yes, 20 years here. ago has finally hit us. But diversification is key. You know, the government is pushing a policy of diversifying the economy mm -hmm. from crude to agriculture, right? Uh, part of which we are seeing in the border closure. Yeah. Um, such that even countries like Taiwan are now begging Nigeria to open it's because, opening because Thai rice is no more you know, coming in and all that stuff. So um, we need to diversify our economy in, towards the area of agriculture. And then we need to increase and improve on our education and health infrastructure. Yeah. There are certain countries that do not have oil. And they're, they're doing just fine. on the intellectual capacity of the people who invest in the people, you don't you don't need you know the resources under their their feet. What you need is their intellectual capacity. Mm -hmm. You know, because I mean, this is the Google generation. Um, this is the digital era. You know, if you take um, Amazon for example, it's 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 essentially the biggest trading company mm -hmm. in the world, and and it, its budget is bigger than what Africa as a as a continent does throw up annually. I mean, mm. that's, that's, that's saying a lot, you know, and that's, that's digital, that's the digital economy, that's the virtual space. You know, so we need to diversify into the area of agriculture so that there will be full self-sufficiency mm -hmm. and security, which is key. Um, and then we need to increase our budget in, in the area of um, education and mm -hmm. health, such that Nigerians who travel abroad yeah. You know, for treatment and all, which is quite a lot for some of these countries, those monies will be retained. Okay. And then other countries, especially within the African, you know, uh, sub uh, the West African sub region, and even in Africa, can come to Nigeria because our health infrastructure will be good. Mm -hmm. These are for uh, foreign exchanges that will be coming in to help boost our economy. Mm -hmm. You know, so I mean, th these are some of the areas that we can uh, we can improve. Uh, improve, you know, to, to diversify from. Certain areas that are not within our direct control.
Right. I mean, we, 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 we can actually uh, help protect ourselves because now there's, there's, there's this seeming threat between America and Iraq mm -hmm. and Iran, you know. If the war, if it does happen or some kind of escalation does happen, well, it might be beneficial to us too, you know, um, because it means uh, there will be no production in those areas for, you know, a very long term. Our, oh, our so economy could, could be So it's sometimes these things have a swing both, both ways. Uh, it actually depends on how it robs you. All right. Uh, you are still here. We'll continue. And still in business, the disposable incomes of Nigerian consumers will be squeezed by the proposed increase of value-added tax on electricity tariffs this year. An economic and financial expert, Bismarck Rewani, has said he, Rewadi, who is the managing director and chief executive officer of financial derivatives company Limited, said the VAT VAT hike, which is from 5% to 7.5%, would lead to higher commodity prices. He said other challenges would include low income per capita and high income inequality and rising poverty rate in the country. They added that further depreciation of the Naira could translate to higher prices. Stay with me in the studio is uh, Osila Mahos, an economist. He will again share his thoughts on this. And now the economic and financial expert, whom we all know, uh, Bismarck Rwani, uh, said disposable incomes of Nigerian consumers will be squeezed um, by the proposed increase of the VAT. Do you agree or what are your thoughts on that? Because somehow we wait for or people trust his um, forecast, so to speak. I mean, I mean uh, Mr. Rwani is actually stating the obvious. Mm. Uh, you don't need to go to Harvard or Yale or Cardiff like I did oh, to wow. to uh, to descend that. I mean, it's it's if you are raising the VAT from five percent to seven point five, mm -hmm. that's you know I talked about taxation. That's yes. taxation, right? What it does is it does emasculate the um, transactionary capacity of the people. Mm. So it's it's um, is a is a is a contractionary policy by the government. Right. So yes, disposable, especially in a situation where income, incomes are not rising, where earning capacities are not rising, as it were, um, when you're not applying an increased taxation to a fixed income, of course, uh, this, uh, that, that would have a negative impact. So mm -hmm. yes, I mean, it's, it's absolutely right. Okay. So we are already in the situation, so yeah. to speak. It's, it's now seven point uh, seven point five. Seven point five. Yeah. So what should uh, Nigerians do to overcome this, the said hike, and that will lead to higher commodity prices in your? Opinion? No, I think essentially, um, what your people need to find ways to improve their income capacity. Mm -hmm. um, that is one. Try to engage in, 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 in other areas that would, uh, you know, have a multiple income stream. Mm -hmm. um, and then again, to reduce your spending, cut out quite a lot of things that are not essential. You mustn't drink champagne, right? Okay. Uh, luxury, cut out the cut out luxury. Mm -hmm. Just focus on the basics. Um, it's only until you can actually afford those luxurious goods and or services. Mm -hmm. then you, you can go for the go extras. For Otherwise, uh, cut your code according to your material. <laughs> yeah, that's the new way yeah, to say. That's, that's, so that's that's let's it. stick to the essentials, so to speak. You know, so, I mean, there are some countries that, I mean, VAT is actually 15%. I and mean, you go to South Africa, it's much more than 7.5. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've, we've actually been pampered for far too long as it were. I mean, let's be realistic. And these are some of the reasons why Nigerians are known as uh, consumers of luxury goods. Mm -hmm. You know, some goods that are not even consumed in countries where they are produced, they are consumed here with so much... Um, Extras. You know, uh, so much extremity, you know. I mean, we, we need to cut down on our needless you know, consumption. Okay, so having said that, your fi final question will be, again, according to Rwanda, 2020, he says, will be a year of economic import ripples at both uh, global and economic uh, economy and domestic markets because we depend on, let me not say because we depend, we trust his forecast. Do you agree with this, that we'll be in that situation, both globally and locally? No, again, too, I mean, that's stating the obvious. There are certain, certain things that happen that are not you know, foreseen or expected. So, I mean, it's not like he's making a forecast mm -hmm. or forecasts that have not been seen. Um, but I'm sure, of course, he's, pred he's predicating it based on um, certain things that are, I mean, certain headwinds, right? I just talked about the tension between the United States and, and Iran. Yeah. That could trigger a lot of 
things within the global space. Some good, some bad, depending on how it rubs off on you. Uh, the trade war between China and the United States, mm -hmm. we already, we are, we've already all seen the what impact. the impact has been. You know? So yes, I mean, certain things, um, we are not major players in the, in the uh, economic global space. I mean, let's be realistic. Mm -hmm. um, actually, given now that our GDP has dipped, our ranking has tanked and all that, you know, so um, a situation where countries that we depend on essentially for as our trading partners, you know, maybe having certain issues or problems, I mean, it's really put an impact on us. So, um, but I don't want to be um, overly negative, you know, I mean, let's still be hopeful that some things could work out for our good. Okay. If America and Iraq, if they go to and Iran, if they go to war, it means that we will now be able to supply more oil and earn more. Mm -hmm. And then our foreign reserve will probably move from 38 billion where it is now, probably over 60 billion, mm -hmm. which is good for us. All right.